Hello there everyone and welcome to today's reflection coming from Kalin Parish Mans. The light of the world has come. Jesus is the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness will never overcome it. Amen. In Matthew's Gospel in chapters 5 and 6 we have the famous Sermon on the Mount and there's a couple of verses in that sermon where Jesus talks about worry. Who among you by worrying can add a single hour to his life, Jesus says. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Of course it's from these verses that we get the the idea of one day at a time and of course the, there's a well-known Christian song to that effect uh, with the chorus one day at a time sweet Jesus which is a favorite for many people of course we've got to realize like everything Jesus said we can't really pin things down and absolute absolutize them because it depends on the situation because they can be these great truths can be applied differently depending on what it is we're going through who we are and the particular circumstances of the situation but as a general rule it's good advice by worrying sometimes we can add to the difficulties we face now no one is saying and I'm sure Jesus wouldn't say that there, there is no point in worrying all the time. There may be situations where worry is absolutely natural and very human. And maybe we worry with, with good reason. But there's other times when we worry unnecessarily. And it's about taking one day at a time. But I want to go further than that. I think that's a great truth in general terms, to take one day at a time. But I want to narrow it down even further. Now, I'm beginning to sound like a, a cracked record because, or a broken record, because I love the, the scenario where we, we examine two Greek words uh, for um, time. One is chronos, from which we get the English word chronology. So think of time on a line. There's the past, there's the present, there's tomorrow and then there's Kairos and Kairos is an appointed time or a time in season for example we talk about Christmas time it's a specific thing we talk about the seasons of the year and it's that sense of the now I want to combine both of these over my left shoulder you will see a Celtic cross on the wall and I like the Celtic cross because it combines two things. Firstly, there's a circle which indicates eternity, God's eternity. And then there's the cross. And the cross represents God's involvement. It's like a spoke into time and history in a specific place and a specific event and through a specific person, Jesus. And that is the Kairos moment. And because there's a circle and the cross, it's like the eternal now. So God is eternal. The past, the present and the future are all caught up in him. And he sees things from outside of time. But what he asks of us is to see the eternal in each and every moment. The now, the eternal now. So Kairos is about an appropriate time, an appropriate response to each and every situation. I wonder if we disciplined ourselves better. Each and every day there would be moments where our attitude and our thoughts and our response to things could be different. Juan Mascaro, the famous Spanish mystic, said, each moment of the day can be the opportunity to do something good. Each moment of the day. 
and I like that. So rather than say take one day at a time, I'm saying take one moment at a time. Whether in joy, whether in sorrow, whether in indifference and just meandering along, to think about what we're doing. Because it begins with thoughts, doesn't it? Our thoughts are on the go all the time. But it's about capturing them. There is a saying, sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an action and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a lifestyle. And disciplined habits, as I've said many a time in these reflections, is part and parcel of being a Christian. But it begins with thoughts. So we have, in a sense, some control over that. Now I'm not saying that life is always easy, there are difficulties and worry is, is very common, and very human. But we can use each moment to begin something good. It's up to us. You've heard the phrase, seize the day. And sometimes we can do that, we can prevaricate, we can think, oh, should I or should I not? And sometimes we just need to be confident and have courage that through God, we will make the right decision and just do it. But another thing is to stop. Rather than action, is to stop what we're doing and reflect on what's happening. They say, stop and smell the roses. And that's true. <laughs> or slow down when you're eating and really enjoy it. When was the last time you gulped down a cup of coffee whilst you're thinking of something else or you're in the midst of something else, rather than take a seat and enjoy the coffee? It seems such a small, trivial thing. But even an action like that can inspire gratitude. Gratitude that, hey, we're alive in the moment. Each day is a gift. Each day is a miracle. Each moment has a potential for positivity and negativity. What are we going to do with each moment that comes our way? Now, we can have a good morning and then something happens in the afternoon it ruins the day. Or a good day and something happens in the evening. And that's why I think moments are important. Because these moments give us an opportunity through God's grace and with God's prompting to think and to see the right way. And in doing that, perhaps we'll be following in the footsteps of our master. And perhaps then we can, in a sense, get something out of life, no matter how difficult the day. Now, some of you will say, well, is this not along the lines of the power of positive thinking, which is very much a secular thing? Well, I, I guess it is, but it's also relying on the grace of God to give us a lift, to inspire us, his presence to draw close to us, and for us to remember in our difficult moments, in our upset, in our anger, in our resentment, in our disappointments, hang on a minute, God loves us. He's here at the moment. Let's turn this around. Let's make this anew. There was a phrase I came across a number of years ago which talked about doing an Australian, <laughs> doing an Australian, and it meant an attitude. So the, you, you act as though you're an Australian. You know, you know the phrase, no worries, mate. I'm not going to even try an Australian accent because it would come out all wrong. But imagine the Australian accent. No worries, mate. It's the idea of they love the barbecue, they love their beer, they love the sunshine, and they let all the hassles of life just whoosh over their head. Now, of course, real life is more complicated than that, and sometimes you can't let things whoosh over your head. But the Australians are held up <clears throat> as an example of that positive type of thinking. So, in, but instead of trying to imitate the Australian attitude, let's just be Christian in the sense of remember who we are, what we are, and that God is with us in all things. And that should shape our thinking 
and that should shape our feeling each and every day. So there are moments to remember that and capture that. Let us pray. Lord, this coming week, be in all that we do and all that we experience and guide our thinking by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you for watching and listening. God be with you all. Amen.